All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be looking at an AP Physics 1 sample free response question uh, dealing with unit 6 material, which is simple harmonic motion. Specifically, we're going to be looking at a spring mass system that's oscillating and a couple other things related to energy with it. So this is a publicly available question, um, and it reads, A 20 kilogram box on a horizontal frictionless surface is moving to the right at a speed of 4 meters per second. The box hits and remains attached to one end of a spring of negligible mass whose other end is attached to a wall. As a result, the spring compresses a maximum distance of 0.5 meters and the, the box then oscillates back and forth. So this box comes in, hits the spring, attaches to it, um, it compresses at a total distance of 0.5 meters, but then it's going to oscillate back and forth um, about some equilibrium position. So the first part of the question asks, well, it says, this is part uh, A, part one. The spring does work on the box from the moment the box first hits the spring to the moment the spring first reaches its maximum compression. Indicate whether the work done by the spring is positive, negative, or zero. So let's actually really quickly just look at an energy bar graph, thinking this through kind of conceptually what's going on with energy. Uh, up here, when the box is moving, at position A, it's got kinetic energy, and when the spring is fully compressed, uh, that's the point where the, the box is like completely slowed down to rest, and it's at that instant in time, it's going to turn around and speed back up in the other direction. So at this position, when the spring is fully compressed, <clears throat> excuse me, it has a zero velocity. So if we define our system as just the box, when it's moving, it's got kinetic energy. At position B, when the spring is fully compressed, it has no kinetic energy. So the system goes from having some, some amount of energy to no energy. So negative work must have been done in the box. What's doing that negative work? Well, that was the spring. So going up to our answer, we'd say that there's negative work being done in the box. Because remember, also, the box, as the spring is being compressed, is sliding to the right. And what direction is the spring pushing in the box while it's moving to the right? When the spring is being compressed, it's pushing back to the left. So if the box is moving to the right and the spring is pushing in the opposite direction that it's being displaced, then there's negative work being done in the box. The spring is doing negative work. So we'd say, as the box moved to the right, after the moment it first hits the spring, the spring pushes back on the box to the left. When an object feels a force in the opposite direction that it is moving, negative work is done on the object, in this case, well, decreasing the total energy of the object, and in this case, it's decreasing the kinetic energy of the object. The second part of uh, part A has us calculate the magnitude of the work described in part, the first part. So if we look at our uh, energy bar graph, we have the kinetic energy in the beginning minus the work done equals the energy we have in the end. So the kinetic energy at position A minus the work done equals zero because the box has no stored energy in the end. Uh, this will allow us to solve for the magnitude of the work done. So we have to find out how much kinetic energy our box has. We have one half times its mass and the speed at which it's moving squared minus the work done on the box. Uh, rearranging this a little bit, just add the work done on the box to both sides, so we get that the work done on the box is equal to the initial kinetic energy it had. So 20 kilogram box, the mass of 20 kilograms, times its initial speed of 4 meters per second squared. Turns out that initially it had 160 joules of kinetic energy, which was completely taken away by the negative work done on the box. So the magnitude of the work done on the box by the spring is 160 joules of energy. Part B has us calculate the spring constant of the spring. So um, in order to do that, we're going to have to think about energy conservation. And instead of defining our system as just the box, so there's negative work being done by the spring, um, if we look at how we did it in the previous part here, um, in our energy conservation equation, there's no spring, there's no spring constant term. There's that, not that K constant, so we can't solve for that. 
So we have to redefine our system a little bit. So instead of defining our system as just the box in part B, we could define our system as both the box and the spring. And that's, in that case, our the box spring system has kinetic energy stored in the beginning, and in the end, it's only spring potential energy. So our energy conservation now becomes the kinetic energy the system has at A, position A, is equal to the spring potential energy the system has at position B. So we have 1 half mv squared, that's the velocity of position A, equals 1 half times k times delta x squared, or x squared, however you want to write that. And that x represents the amount the spring is compressed at position B, and that's that maximum amount of 0.5 meters. And of course, k is the spring constant. That's what we're trying to find. And so we found out in the previous part that at position A, it had 160 joules of kinetic energy, and we'd get that if we plugged in our mass and our velocity again here. So that's equal to 1 half times the spring constant times the maximum compression squared. That's how much the spring is compressed at position B. And if we solve this algebraic equation for the spring constant, we get about 1,280 newtons. Okay. Part C says to calculate the magnitude of the maximum acceleration of the box. Well, remember, the box is going to feel its maximum acceleration when it feels the maximum net force. Uh, and this happens when the spring is at its maximum compression or when the spring is like, you know, remember, remember that mass is like oscillating back and forth. And so either when it's like has its largest displacement to the right at the maximum compression or its largest stretch when the spring is like uh, when the mass is all the way on the left hand side of equilibrium. Either way, um, we get our maximum acceleration. This is Newton's second law is equal to the sum of the, the maximum sum of the forces divided by the mass. Well, when we look at the forces, the only force that is not canceled out, the normal force and gravity, those are canceled out. We've got the force of the spring, so the maximum spring force will give us the maximum net force, or the maximum sum of the forces. And we can calculate the force on any spring by taking the spring constant times its maximum stretch or its maximum compression. So that's going to be give us the maximum size spring force, and if we divide by the mass, it'll give us our acceleration. So we found in part B that the spring constant was about 1,280 newtons per meter. It stretches, or sorry, it's compressed at most a half a meter. So this will give us the, the maximum force. If we divide by the, that by the mass of 20 kilograms, we get that the maximum acceleration that the box experiences will be 32 meters per second for each second, or meters divided by seconds squared. And technically, um, well, that's going to be the magnitude of the maximum acceleration, because when the box is to the right of equilibrium, the spring is pushing back to the left, and it's going to be a negative acceleration. And when the box is to the left of equilibrium, the spring is going to be pulling back to the right, trying to keep that box, well, the force will always be directed towards equilibrium. But So this is the magnitude. Part D has you calculate the frequency of oscillation of the box. Well, we've got to think about two of our AP equations. Um, we don't have one equation which allows us to directly calculate frequency, but remember, period and frequency are inverses of one another. And we can calculate the period of oscillation for a spring mass system by taking 2 pi times the square root of the mass attached to the spring divided by the spring constant. So first, we can just use the mass and the spring constant that's given to find out that the period of oscillation is about 0.785 seconds. And if period is the inverse of frequency, frequency is also the inverse of period, so we just take the inverse of our period of oscillation, so 1 divided by 0.785 seconds, and we get that the frequency is uh, 1.3 inverse seconds. And remember, an inverse second is the same thing as a hertz, or cycles per second. And so the frequency of oscillation for our spring mass system is 1.3 cycles per second. All right, the last part has us thinking about if we graphed certain variables as a function of, like, well, if we graph certain variables with respect to one another, what would the shape of those graphs look like? So part E says, let x equals 0 be the point where the box makes contact with the spring uh, with positive x directed, directed towards the right. So x sub 0 is our equilibrium position. 
uh, at the point the box makes contact with the spring, the spring is in its relaxed position. So the first graph they're asking us to make says, on the axes below, sketch the kinetic energy K of the oscillating box as a function of position for the range of uh, position being negative 0.5 meters to positive 0.5 meters. <clears throat> so this is essentially the amplitude of oscillation. It's, you know, it's going from, here if we look at our little diagram, this is the position it first makes contact. When the box is at a position of a positive 0.5 meters, that's the maximum compression of the spring. It's oscillating back and forth right here. And when it's at a position of negative 0.5 meters, that's when the spring is fully stretched out. Um, and so when you're graphing something, let's say kinetic energy is a function of position. When they say a function of something, that means the thing it's a function of will be on the x-axis. So we're going to graph kinetic energy in the y-axis and position on the x-axis. Now, to figure out the, sh the shape of that graph, um, we really need to identify an equation that tells us how um, the kinetic energy and position are related to one another. <clears throat> so how is k and x algebraically or graphically related to one another? Well, let's find an equation that has those things in it. Well, it's not quite that simple here because um, uh, our equation for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. There's no x in it. So for this situation, for a spring mass system, how is position and kinetic energy related? Well, we have to kind of come back to what's going on with the total energy of our system. Remember that in a spring mass system, assuming friction is negligible and the total mechanical energy of the system stays the same, that means when we add up the spring potential energy and the kinetic energy, that has to be a constant value. And so the energy of the system has to stay constant and it's going to be equal to this. And so if we were to plot the energy of the system as a function, no matter where the mass is, as it slides to the right and slows down, or it speeds up, goes back towards equilibrium, or like slides to the left of equilibrium and slows down, anywhere it is in its motion at any position, the energy will be the same value. So um, if we can figure out the shape of the uh, how spring potential energy changes as a function of position, and we know the total energy of the system stays constant, we should be able to figure out what the, like the value of the kinetic energy is kind of can approximately for any position. So the first question we need to answer is, how is this, if we were to graph spring potential energy as a function of time, which uh, that's what that blue line here, or the dashed blue line, that is spring potential energy. And that red line, and the red dots are going to represent the kinetic energy of the system. Well, we have one equation that tells us how spring potential energy is related to the position of a spring, or like how far it's stretched, which is also um, going to be equal to the position of the box that's attached to that spring. We can see that, uh, you know, 1 half kx squared, you can see that um, spring potential energy is proportional to the square of x which means if you graph um, spring potential energy in the y-axis versus position, not x squared, just but just versus x as a function of x, which is the graph that they give us, we would expect to see some kind of parabolic relationship or parabolic trend. So um, if we have this blue line and we have this the horizontal line for the energy of our system, we can kind of go through and figure out what the kinetic energy will be. Because remember, the sum of the spring potential energy and the kinetic energy has to be equal to the same value. So let's take position zero. At position zero, there's no spring potential energy. The spring is not compressed or stretched. All of the energy of the system has to be kinetic energy, so we can put a little red dot there. Or what about like at the maximum uh, negative position, the maximum positive position? Um, well, at that point, here the spring is fully stretched or the spring is fully compressed so all of the energy of the system has to be stored as spring potential energy so we put a blue dot there and at its maximum stretching compression it's not moving it's turning around at that instant in time so there's zero kinetic energy so we know there's a dot here at zero a dot here at maximum and a dot here and we'd have to kind of go through then um, along different points to figure out what the kinetic energy values are so let's say you know, at this point, 
for now let's see here let's say here here there's like a little bit of gravitational potential energy and so most like this plus something has to equal the energy of the system so uh, if this is the spring potential energy the kinetic energy has to be the total minus that value so we drop down a little bit here or if this is the spring potential energy of the system this value plus something has to equal the total energy of the system or the energy of the system minus the spring potential energy will give us the value for the kinetic energy and if we kind of think that through kind of at different uh, positions along the way we can see that the kinetic energy is kind of shaped like an upside down parabola like this and at every position if you add up the kinetic energy plus the spring potential energy it should all equal the same constant value okay that one's a little tricky uh, the next one is also a little tricky so let's kind of talk through that one so on this one it says on the axes below or to the side sketch the acceleration a of the oscillating box as a function of position for the range uh, for the same range right so basically on the x-axis again we're graphing its how does the acceleration change as a function of position not as a function of time this is not an acceleration versus time graph so um, we need to have an equation if we want to show how acceleration changes as the position of the box changes with positive displacement or negative displacement we kind of need an equation which shows us how acceleration is related to position well the acceleration of any object in the second law is equal to the sum of the forces on it divided by the mass in this system we've already talked about the fact that the sum of the forces is equal to just the size of the force that the spring exerts on the mass so we take the force of the spring divided by the mass attach the spring and the force is k times x the spring constant times the amount of stretch so we get this equation for a spring mass system like this is not a general equation for any scenario it's just for an oscillating spring mass system we get that the acceleration is equal to the spring constant divided by the mass times the position how far the spring is away from uh, equilibrium either to the left or to the right and so if we look at this equation like these two things are constant well the system is oscillating and so we can see the the relationship just between acceleration and position is a proportional one right this is just these are constant values which means if you were to plot acceleration as a function of position or position as a function of acceleration you would expect um, the graph would be linear with uh, no y intercept and so essentially we would expect to find a linear graph right it's either going to have some positive slope or it's going to have some negative slope and so how do we know um, like which kind of slope it is right whether it's positive or negative well we kind of come back up to this diagram right here so um, in the positive region so as you move let's say as position increases here as the box uh, moves farther to the right from equilibrium what's the direction of the force that it feels well as the box moves to the right of equilibrium it's compressing the spring the spring is pushing back with a force to the left so the spring is pushing with a negative force which means the box is going to be experiencing a negative acceleration and as the box slides farther to the right it's going to feel a larger and larger negative force which means it's going to experience a larger and larger negative acceleration so as we move to the right we're having a larger and larger negative acceleration that's linear and we have to have it linear because of what we found out over here and if we like move to the left of the origin so we have the box is moving like a negative position going up here the box slides as it moves to a farther and farther negative position it's stretching that spring out more and more and the the spring is going to kind of pull back to the right uh, applying a force back in the direction of equilibrium so as the box moves to the left it feels a larger and larger positive force and so as we move to the left uh, it will also experience a larger and larger acceleration and again that has to be linear and so our acceleration graph is a function of position from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5 meters will look something like this